Stillness is the absence of any impediment to movement. So when we're sitting still, don't hold yourself still, even though your body wishes that it could sort of work some kinks out, because that's not actual stillness, that's stagnation. Instead, as you sit, your head wants to do some sort of bobblehead movements where it rolls this way or that way. If you want to shift your weight to your right butt cheek and then shift over to your left butt cheek. You want to softly round the spine and then arch the spine. That helps you actually remove impediments and obstacles so that eventually there's a state of outward seeming stillness that also has this spacious open quality within where blood flow, nerve flow, chi flow, awareness flow, emotion, everything that wants to move, which our body is full of rivers flowing in all directions, that we allow for that flow, yet we seem like we're still on the outside. So whenever you practice meditation, have this, this idea that it's a practice of space, of allowing for, you might say, creating more space between every joint, between the layers of your tissue so that your nerves can flow unimpeded. especially with Parkinson's, that seems to be an aspect that is basically people with Parkinson's are just more vulnerable to the nervous system agitation and sort of kicking into this tremor gear, right? So the practice in the direction of soothing, calming, spacious, open, and then we do our movements, our Tai Chi movements and such, retaining that quality of spacious. So everything that we do is geared towards being able to be executed mm -hmm. soft well, and relaxed. Before we adjust it. Judy, you just, you just unmuted Bruce there. Uh, I got him. I'll, I'll mute him now. Uh -huh. Bam. All right. Alrighty, so from that calm, easy quality, just very gently begin those spinal movements. Round and arch. So for our purposes, range of motion, you know, the size of the movement isn't as important as the quality. Quality of ease. So just gentle oozing. From move to move. And also, if your awareness can hold the, the full sort of uh, complex, a lot is happening, even though it's just a little seeming movement. It's like every vertebra, the shoulder blades, the skull, the pelvis. So you're creating a lot of little change, which adds up to a lot of change, a lot of movement, this writhing in the body. And as you finish your next gentle arch, come back to neutral and go right into rotation. Left hand slide forward, right hand slide back, just a gentle turn. And then back to middle and turn. And just do this a few times. Same idea. How far you twist, not as important as how are you executing it? Are you forcing it or are you oozing? melting again almost like you're falling through movement 
falling through movement, sliding through movement. So we're like lubricating the pathways so that we're not in our own way. We're not our own obstacle or impediment. Now, back to neutral, arms hang, and then very much like you're just, almost like you're falling asleep in your chair and you're about to fall off it, but stay conscious and don't fall and then retrieve yourself back to the middle. And then almost like you're just falling off the chair. Just notice how far can you go falling that way. And then this one, you can add this left elbow rise, maybe even the hand rise, maybe reach. And then droopity droop it down and falling, oozing. <clears throat> Just the more we can execute our movements with falling, easing, sliding, oozing, whatever that word makes sense to you. And it's a retraining because most of the time we haven't been doing this easy type of movement, right? Now let's go right into our shoulder blade circles, right? Forward, up, back, down. Forward and up, back and down. Oozing, sliding. making your movements whole and complete, but not forced. Switching directions, going back, up, forward, down. Feeling the wheels. So we, over time, we reveal that there are these underlying wheels and spirals that we can utilize for movement. Whereas before we were using sort of meat and bone and levers and tension, but then over time practicing like, oh, I can just wheel my way through. Back to the middle, <clears throat> fold at the elbow, soft touch of the shoulder and just release. Now add to this, this little bit here, where as the hands go down, you sort of let them swing and then we swing them back up and they go. Whew. And so this helps to loosen all this space in here. Release, 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 two more. And stay here. Elbows, chicken wing, just to however high you can. I mean, you can see I can get pretty high, but it's not important that you force yourself here and back then. What is important, let's go ahead to the middle, squeeze. What is important here is that a lot of times when I'm working with folks, they see me lift here and they go, they shrug up the shoulders and they get in their own way. Instead, keep this area very relaxed and just lift. Notice I'm not shrugging this. So these get way up here and I'm out of the way and then they just fall. And then around in front, give a little effort to squeeze. Touching elbows. And then release. And just ease up. Almost like they're anti-gravity. They just float up and down. And then elbows go back, down, forward. Some of you will have to stop about here or lower even. Others, <clears throat> maybe you can get up to the place where hands on back, forward, down, back. And again, ease. Can you just slide your way? 
So a rush to a destination point usually is accompanied with tension. So this rush to going, oh, I got to get my elbows back instead of like, no, the whole way I'm just tracking how much ease am I practicing with this movement? How round is my movement? How spacious are all the spaces between joints, between tissue? Now, we'll do this one single. Elbow comes across. The hand is over here, but I'm really focused on this. Lift it, and it goes out to the side. And it just falls next to the body. The elbow comes across, of course the hand is here, but I'm thinking from here, up, and then out, not back, All right, again. So again, when I say out, not back, meaning I'm going towards the camera rather than towards the wall behind me. So I'm feeling space here. One more. Let's do one more. It's one of my absolute favorites because it just pulls junk out of the back. Now this movement can be a little weird. Elbow down, back, out to the side. The hand stays tucked in towards the armpit as the elbow goes forward. Try to point it towards camera or close to it. And then as the elbow drops, the hand is here. The elbow leads back, out, up, over, down. Very good, everybody. <clears throat> Again, can you ease your way through it? So Tony, notice the, the, you're doing the thing that a lot of people do here. When you're coming forward, you're letting your hand go forward instead of keep the hand on the body and reach that elbow forward. forward. So point your elbow towards the camera. Yes, more, 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 more and then drop it, and then back and out, up and over. Yes, there it is, and then down, perfect. Other side, cross, up, side, down. So cross, cross your body. So Tone, you're doing the, you're doing over here, reach across. Reach across to your other shoulder. There you go. So elbow across more. So you're doing the opposite of what I'm doing, so that might be confusing you. But then go elbow out to the side. There it is. Elbow drops towards the body, comes across to the middle. That's it. Up and then out. <clears throat> this might come in handy on the Bart train. Bang. You might have to elbow somebody someday. You never know, right? Out. Sorry. I uh, lost you guys there. Okay. <clears throat> and out. Down. Now, elbow back. Out. Up. Over. Hands got to stay tucked in near the chest. And then down in front. Back, out, up, over, down. Back, out, up, over, down. Couple more. Last one. Okay, a few double cross so the cross is a little weird because they get in each other's way but cross up and then out down other cross up out and the cross is really important because it opens the back cross and then up and open the front and then cross and Oh, now elbows down and back, out, up, over, hands stay tucked in near the armpit, and then down, back, out, up, over, down.
Great job, everybody. Looking really good. Last one here. Hands in front. Palms down, up, down, up. Just the forearms corkscrewing. And then palms stay up, wrists. And remember over time, see how I'm doing this with my fingers? So at first it's just make sure the wrist is actually moving, but then start to get that sort of Kung Fu quality through the fingers, right? So we're folding and that really stretches all this and then, and then unfurl it and then fold, right? Other way, in, over, and out. Spin, in, over, and out. So I gather the fingers in and then lay them out. Gather pinky to thumb and lay them out. All right. And done, hands up, claw into a soft Tai Chi fist, and then open. So try to have this one have this quality of your fingers going out and over, right? To create that claw, and then they come in and make a fist, soft. Now we add to that, hands go out like you're gonna clasp something and then draw in. Out like you're gonna clasp something and draw in. Two more, out and draw. Out and draw and then just shake them loose. All right, legs. Scoot back a little bit. <clears throat> tai Chi fists, shift to your left buttock, chamber. Down, shift to the right buttock, chamber. Down, left buttock, chamber. Down, right buttock, chamber. Down, this time three kicks. Chamber, heel kick. Chamber, heel kick. Chamber, heel. Chamber and down, other side, chamber, push, chamber, push, chamber, push, and down. One more set. Option, chamber, when you push, turn the leg so the toes are a little out. Chamber, push, the foot is vertical. Chamber, possibly even push, and the leg angles a little in. Chamber, Switch, chamber externally rotated, chamber neutrally rotated, chamber internally rotated, where you're sort of the outer edge of your foot is your kicking edge, the knife edge. And one more set like that. If that hurt the leg or hips or back, just go back to the first version. But option, you see how much I'm turning my leg out. Push and neutral and almost like a side kick where you're turning the leg internally, chamber. And again, externally rotated, neutral, and internally rotated, and down. Extend that right leg, foot and ankle, point, flex. Invert, evert. Circles. Other direction, circles. And down. Foot and ankle, other leg, point and flex. Evert, invert. Circles. And other circles. 
and down. Scoot all the way to that front edge. Swivel steps. Lift ball of left foot. Turn on the heel, leg turns out. Lift heel, turn internal. Lift toes, external. Lift heel, internal. Final time, open. Walk it internal, external, internal, external, neutral. Out. Two, three, four, hold. In. Two, three, four. Neutral, last one. From the hip, hold leg as one. Internal, external, corkscrew, corkscrew, and neutral. Other leg, please. External, internal, external, and hold. In, two, three, four. Middle. Again, external, two, three, four, hold, in. Last one. Hold, and in. Two, three, four, neutral. Now both, and we'll only be able to do one, two and maximum and then in two together do that again external internal and then you should open to your maximum internal external and you should be back to neutral again one two a three and one two three Left hand on right knee, right hand on right thigh. So you're stabilizing here. Lift left leg, open it, set it down. Lift left leg, bring it in, set it down. So the pelvis and other legs stay stable and this closes. And then this opens. And then this closes. And this opens. Close and open. One more. Close. Open. Close. Open. Close. Open. Close. And Forward fold, so legs at hip distance, hinge and bow. <laughs> Sitting up, tipping back, and up. One more, tipping forward, up, tipping back, and vertical. The dragon bows, step, step. As you bow, dragon arms, that's internally rotated elbows flared out, palms on the thighs. Fold between the legs, between the arms, elbows stay up as you drop torso and head down. And then sitting up and leaning back. As you lean back, arms have to go to neutral. And then forward. Arms turn to that dragon arm position, and we bow. Up, one more, leaning, and then forward, and bow. And right into the dragon stirs the sea, leaning back, tipping over, and slightly turning the chest, kind of like a twist bowing your to uh, chest towards your right knee and then sweeping through as your arms are in the dragon position and then leaning back and around you go. Circle. And around. Circle. And around. 
Other direction. Circle. Circle. Dragging arms. And then neutral arms. Dragging. Neutral. And middle. Legs back towards each other. Shogun closing our joint mobilization and seated warm up. Hands cross slightly and come down alongside you, standing and sitting. So remember, you either have the square version or the circle version. Bring the feet back. Those of you that know that you're feeling comfortable with that circle where it's just flow up, you can do it right away. But I'll always be teaching the square version first for people who need it, right? So folding. Then the first gesture is forward. So your butt's off the chair and you're forward. Then just push through the earth and it naturally launches you vertical. Then the butt goes back. I haven't bent the knees yet. Then I sink the butt staying forward and then sitting upright. Hinge, forward, push through the earth, fold without bending knees, sink the butt that bends the knees, sit vertical. Now the round version where it's just some forward, some up, and we just flow. Same thing on the way back. The tail sneaks out and sings. And so now it doesn't have that corners and edge sort of linear quality. It's just this, this flow. One more. Go ahead up and stay up. And then let's do a few just squats, <clears throat> linear squats are just like the square, sit and rise back up. Fold, sit, rise back up. So that's that square version. And the circle version is tail sneaks out the back just enough so that as we sink it, the knees are perfectly happy, back is open and there's a round quality. And then we just rise. So it becomes more of a single gesture rather than multiple gestures. It's just kind of tail sneaking out and sinking as we let the hands dangle. And we rise. And again, sink. And we rise. Okay. Staying vertical. Rock into the balls of the feet. Now just stay in the balls of the feet for a little bit. Just stay there. Challenge yourself to have this feeling of, whoa, if, if I didn't do what I'm doing tension-wise to hold yourself up, I might fall forwards. So you want to play at that edge and then try to relax there so that you feel like, oh, I'm not doing anything unnecessary to keep me up. I'm just, my feet are doing just that little thing that they need to do to sustain uprightness. And then rock back to the middle and do the same thing in the heels. Just play back into the heels and just notice, okay, I'm in the heels. Maybe the ball of the foot is even sort of slightly off the ground, right? The toes and the ball of the foot. So you're back there and you're going, okay, can I relax here? Can I let myself just connect down through the earth by being back in the heels? And then to the middle and let's go to the toes again. Stay in the toes. Now, as we stay in the toes, go more to the right. So you're in the front of the right foot. Stay in the front, come back to middle, and then go more to the left foot. And then back the other way. And just notice anything you're doing that's unnecessary. Are you grabbing on in a place that you could release? You just have this loose, easy body. And come back to the middle. Back to the middle and all the way back to the heels a little bit extra. Stay in your heels. Can you go to the right heel? 
and then back to the middle, staying in the heels, or to the left heel. This exercise is great for many reasons, one of which is that it can only really be executed without anything extra happening. You have to relax and let yourself feel your feet on the ground and feel the body weight getting through you that you can just go, okay, arrange it over here. And arrange it over there. Now go over to the right heel and stay in it. Now we're gonna go from right heel to right toes. So come along the side of the foot up to the right toes and then back to the right heel. Now stay on that right side and just go forward and back. And just, again, be safe with it, but play with your edge. This edge of I'm about to fall because we want to get more and more relaxation in places that normally we feel like, oh, I'm about to fall. Instead, we can be like, no, I'm not. I'm right there. I'm good. Next time you're in the toes, stay in the toes, come across. Now we play in the left foot. Back to the left heel, and then to the left toe. Left heel, and left toe. Heel, and toes. I'm just kind of polishing that circle there. Heel. And now let's go for a couple of circles. So to the toes, come across the toes. Now you're in the right toes, come back to the right heel. Stay in the heels as you come across. And then toes as you come across. Heels as you come across. And then once you get to the middle of the toes, go back the other way. Let's go left. Back along the left foot and across to the right on the heel. Forward along the right foot and across on the toes. Back along the left. And then finally, get to the toes and settle to your middle. Shogun. Settle down to the belly. Hands cross slightly and come down alongside you. Rock to your toes and paint the wall in front with the back of the hands. Important piece here is change and then sweep. Same thing here, change and then float. Change and then sweep, change, and then paint. So then it's change into that painting down, change in. And so learning to control wow, right there is the place our brain usually totally misses. And so we're polishing those little blind spots right there and down. Same quality with crane flapping wings. The arms are in sort of the painting position, the back of hands painting. And then there's a sinking of shoulders, elbows, and wrists that changes the hands and then flap the wing. And then change and sweep. Change and then float and sweep. One more. Whole body, right? The whole body kind of lifting and filling. And then the whole body is gently settling. Now, wings roll turning the palms up-ish. Fold just the elbow joint, the hands fall into the middle, and then they settle, 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 settle through, wing. Roll and fold. So eventually you want it to be roll fold. Down. 
wings roll fold. Down. Wings. Now, right hand roll, left hand turns to a wing and fold and sweep under. Now the hands come towards each other and away from each other. Let's do that just a couple of times, calibrating just this portion right here, just this. So that one arm isn't the only arm moving. Notice that that's happening for you, which is happening for a few of you, where you're only moving this or you're only moving that. You gotta move, go, go. Calibrate the brain and body. Now separate and keep them going around the far sides of those circles. Then roll left palm and fold and sweep under and do a few of these open and close. Open, close, open, close. Now open and keep opening, opening, and then they just go around those far circles. Roll fold right hand as left hand comes under. One close, and then open, open, open around the circle. Roll fold left hand, and they settle towards each other. Two more each. Couple of connect dot moments. It's top and bottom. It's far left and far right. Top and bottom. And middle. Top and bottom. Far left and right at the same time. Top and bottom at the same time. And middle at the same time. Let's just do one more. And then out to the wings and down to your side. Fold right elbow, turn right palm to face forward, Tai Chi push, turn the hand around, Tai Chi draw. Again, turn hand, Tai Chi push. Notice the arm goes straight but doesn't lock and doesn't force. There's this place here where it looks like a hose that allows water through and back, the elbow comes a little back behind. So this is a loaded up, spring loaded little mechanism that can both push away, but also can receive into that spring loaded mechanism. Push away. So sort of like you're catching something, right? You're, you can't just have it stuck out there. You have to receive it in to the body, push away, and then receive. Let that hand fall, fold other hand up, push, draw, push, draw. Again, you're practicing one of the main functions of the arm is to send away, but also to receive and draw in. So it's sort of like not a pulling so much as a receiving, right? Those uh, have different qualities. Are, yes. Are, are we shifting our weight uh, no. from one leg to another? No. no. Just... But if that happens, that's okay. You know, that's fine. For now, we're just doing symmetrical. Just I'm sort of shifting into my toes a little and then shifting into the heels a little, right? And down with that hand. Bend elbows, hands come up. So now as you push, let's add that idea of shift into the toes and push, shift to the heels and draw. What this also gives us a moment of is the Ming Men. You guys hopefully remember what that is, this section of the body, <clears throat> push and draw. So when we push, we would fall forward if we just let our Ming Men go with our pushing. 
So the Ming Men actually stabilizes. So you push, you go to your toes, but your Ming Men, you sort of send back a little bit, even as you're extending. And then it's somewhere you can draw back to. Push and draw. Push and draw. Now, left hand stays close, right hand turns. Palm forward, push right hand out. Now here's the challenge here. Both palms simultaneously changing their relationship. Left hand ready for a push and then push and pull. Then both hands simultaneous, push and pull. Simultaneous and push pull. Now here let's add weight shift into your left leg as the right arm pushes and then change and then weight change into your right leg as left arm pushes this becomes what's called repulse monkey this is a movement that's practiced walking backwards eventually so you're training that idea now <clears throat> also feel how there's a little hip turn but also waist turn that ming ming shift Turn, push, shift, turn and push. Change the hands, shift, turn and push. Now bring both hands back, down, shogun. Hands cross slightly and fall down. Now, lateral shift, changing to left leg, changing to right leg. <clears throat> Remember the thing I was saying about the arm, how one of its main functions is this spring-loaded quality? The leg as well, when you shift into it, let it receive the body weight and slightly like almost a landing gear on a lunar module, take the weight and then change. So that's different than locking up the leg so that it's like a stilt that we're trying to balance on. The difference is we're not made of wood, we're made of liquid. Let the leg take that body weight. And then when you shift over, just let that change to your right leg. And then change to your left leg. Now, index finger in the belly button. Change to your right leg, turn belly button slightly right. Change to the left leg, belly button turn slightly left. Shift or change legs and turn belly. Shift, turn. So eventually the shift and the turn are one thing. A shift turn. And a shift turn. Let the arms hang. Shift, turn, sweeping hands across. Shift, turn, sweeping hands the other way. The technical term of brush knee with the right, sweep leg with the left. Brush knee, sweep leg. Brush knee, sweep leg. Looser and looser and looser with each round. Letting go and allowing space. Problem with some Tai Chi practice is it gets sloppy. People are either stiff or sloppy, right? So keep the arrangement of easing your way, oozing your way. And for this particular one, keeping the hands close to the body so that we can be clear when it's time to now send that outside hand around the far side of a circle. It's far away from my body, but it's at the same level. It did not lift up. Be clear on that. And then it comes around and in close to the body. As we brush it through, the other hand goes around that far circle, comes in close. The bear swirls the street. Looser and looser. And feel that Ming Men as your center, your middle, that you never lose the middle. Even though you're changing leg to leg, you're 
turning, you're allowing these spirals and circles to occur, never does your middle fall out of place. And so that's really what we're cultivating is a middle that we want to never lose. Now the fish start jumping, but not very high. So sweep across out of the water, right? So your hand comes up a little and then goes across in front, maybe middle belly or sternum height. Sweep. Oh, they start jumping a little higher. Now we're at chest height. Chest height. Chest, chest, maybe a little higher, shoulders and chin, shoulder and chin, circles, loops, loops, loops. Now, just however high feels good to you there, could be up around the mouth or even the forehead. Swinging these bare arms. And then go back to brushing or uh, washing the paws. And then on this next one, turn it into brush knee and push. So that's bare, wash paws, left arm wing, roll, fold. Now it's loaded up, ready for a push. This hand's ready for brush knee. So it's shift turn, one hand brush, one hand soft push. They change. Roll fold, you're ready for shift turn brush push. They change, shift turn brush push, shift turn brush push. Sort of a sophisticated movement in the demand for what the arms are doing now, right? Because they have to travel and change places and they have to hit these bullseyes, these points together. You want them to arrive together. Now, stay in your left leg. Bend left elbow, point left fingers up. Right hand settles down onto the surface of the water. Right foot is empty. Step it a little bit behind you with the toes turned out. So a turned out leg and then sit back into it. Empty left foot toe touching, golden rooster. Now just practice here, allowing your back leg to be the entire support leg, and it's got that lunar landing module quality to it. You're not stilted out on it. You're allowing the weight through. Then lift, lower, lift, lower. If when you lift, this happens with your torso, it means you're not actually yet empty here. So you'll know you're empty when you can go do do do, and nothing changes. The teacup stays perfectly balanced. Now, can you lift and hold two, three, and then put it down softly without putting weight in? Hold two, three, down. One more. Now, bring that foot back. You got a little ballet position. Turn out, duck foot. Change your weight so now your left leg is your support leg. Left hand falls to surface of water. Bend right elbow, point fingers up. Touch the floor out in front. Take a moment, check crown up, tail down. Allow that left leg to support you completely. And then lift, lower, lift, lower. Then can you lift and hold it up? Two. Three, set it down just softly. And then again, up, two, three, down, up, two, three. Now set down, duck foot, change the weight. Empty that left foot, set it out either touching the floor or immediately into the lifted position. And then put it back down with no weight in it, change. Lift it or touch the floor. Down, change the weight. Really feel like the pistons changing. One leg is yang, the other yin. Set it down, it's still yin. And then now you turn it yang, and this becomes yin. Down, yang to yin, 
into yang. Into yang. And now, parallel feet. Wash your paws. play with clouds. So now, as we go to the right, right hand stays in the water, left hand sweeps the lake and vapors up. Is a cloud in the sky. Shift turn, cloud lake. Top hand rains down as the bottom hand vapors up. Shift and turn, cloud lake. Vapor and rain. Cloud lake. Vapor and rain. Remember the shift turn, shift turn, and then the shift turn, and let the limbs flow. Shift turn and let the limbs. Shift turn. Shift turn. Shift. Turn. shift. Now on this next one here, we come across, stay in the right. And this is a newer one that we've done a little bit. So left hand, turn palm up. Right hand goes behind the back, take it out of the game for a moment. Left hand goes away from the body. And then as you shift turn, it travels diagonally across and up. And if I turn sideways, you can see my arm doesn't break this plane. I'm not cranking it. It's still in front. But again, it's not in front. It's to this corner. Then turn the palm out. Sweep down the bird wing. Shift and turn. Sweep the leg. Turn the palm facing up. And now here's the unique. Again, don't let the arm get too high there, Nancy. We don't want it all the way up here because we're challenging ourselves to track this unique pathway. That isn't linear, right? This is sort of linear. This is sort of easy to track. And then if we were to go up here and take it over there, that would be linear. But instead, we're down here, and it's got to go diagonally slicing through and arrive. Palm turns out, sweep, and come across. So I'm going to turn sideways so you can see the journey of the arm. It goes away from the body and on a slight upward trajectory and the palm is facing up the entire time like you're holding a little candle in your palm there. Turn the palm out, sweep, palm facing up the whole time and it arrives. One more. It's called flying diagonal and it's one half of a movement called parting wild horses me or stroking the wild horses me. Now bring the right hand out, bears washing paws, left hand behind your back, right hand is at the bottom of the circle. This is the bottom of this circle, right? Then the hand goes away from the body, and as you shift and turn, it carries up to that bullseye. Palm turns out, sweep the hand down. Sweep across, bottom of a ball. This is the new-ish, uh, vocabulary movement, right? This flying diagonal. All that we're doing up till here is all uh, familiar. And then here, that's a new path. We're carving that new path. All this is familiar. And then that's new. more. As it sweeps across, bring the left hand out, bear back to middle. Left hand bottom of a ball, right hand top of a ball. Now on two parallel lines, travel Notice that like train tracks, they're on train tracks here. The palms are staying and facing each other. 
then turn those train tracks on a diagonal so that this bottom hand does our flying diagonal movement. The top hand does sort of a down and away karate chop and then reverse that. This is stroking the wild horse's mane. Right? You can almost see that visual, right? this beautiful mane between one hand on top, one hand scooped under and we're Now, extend to that position. Left hand turns palm out. Right hand turn palm up. This is familiar here, embrace the moon. To a ball. Part wild horse mane. Turn the palms. Left out, right up. Now, shift right, turn slightly right. Let's add the shift turn. Shift turn as you part wild horses may. Turn left palm out, right palm up as you embrace the moon. A shift turn back. A shift turn, part wild horses may. And a shift turn. more. Hit your bullseyes. Time everything. So one isn't arriving before the other. So we're timing, 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 timing. Bing! Arrive. Now, right hand comes down, left hand turns, the bear washes paw back to the middle. Right hand bottom of circle, Left hand on top, train tracks. And the point of the idea with train tracks is that they're traveling along opposite lines that are related to each other. One's going one way, other going the other. And you're tracking both movements simultaneous. Turn the train tracks slight diagonal. So now, Right arm is doing flying diagonal, left hand is doing down and away karate chop and then reversal. Now hold here, right palm turns away, left palm turns up. Embrace the moon. Hold the ball. Stroke the wild horse's mane. Turn right palm, left palm. Embrace moon. As you embrace moon, shift turn left, loading up, sort of winding up, and then release that wound up potency and express it through the movement. Turn right palm out, left palm up. Now we shift turn as we gather, gather, gather. Make sure left hand comes up and over there. Uh, Joanna next time and then part wild horse main right so right hand is high left hand is low the right palm turns out left palm turns up as we change the left palm has to come up right so as right hand goes down the left hand comes up and then it's this fold and gather perfectly done and again part wild horse main turn the palms a one two then as you start shifting, one goes down, the other goes up. Then as you sh finish your shift turn, one sweeps the lake while the other does a little roll fold. So you notice these vocabulary words that I've worked on of, of the simpler movements start showing up in these complex movements. And you need to have those feeling somewhat comfortable before we start walking and shifting and turning in space, right? Because then it just becomes a total discombobulation, possibly. Now, final thing here, part wild horse mane. Now, staying in the right leg, sweep left hand across the leg and drop the right hand over. Now we go the other way, part wild horse mane. 
sweep right hand across as left hand falls into the whole ball. And then part wild horse main to the left. Stay here, sweep hand and fold other one over, gathering and sort of winding up, and then unwind and express. Right hand sweep, left hand fall over, unwind and express. Sweep and gather. And express. Gather and express. So don't be in a rush from here to get to the other side. First, do that. And then you're ready to do that. So not skipping this moment right here. I didn't shift yet. And then now, stay in the left leg as you, and then, one more each. Make one more ball. Right hand goes out and around. Left hand turns. Bear. Washing. Back. The middle. Rock to your heels, the hands swing back and up. Rock to your toes, the hands reach out into the distance. Rock to the heels, the hands come back, mouth, belly, tail sneaks out and you sink it as you slide the hands down. Push through the earth, rise. Two more, rock back swinging. Rock forward, wrapping and gathering. Rock back, inviting and settling. Tail sneaks out, let it go through. Rock back and a forward. And back in the middle. Rising up, shogun, wings, roll full, settling all the energy like water settles to ground reservoir. The middle of the middle of the middle, the middle of the belly. It's not something you do, it's something you get out of the way and it naturally is there. Then seal the practice, one hand over navel. Other hand over that hand. Couple moments, mind empty, clear. Heart mind, which is that part of us, one way of thinking of it is that part of us that's desiring, right? That might be thinking, what's next? I gotta do this next thing, but can we quiet that? And let the energy actually return to its nest. And Taoist bow, thumb, fold. Have a comfortable seat. And if you have time for it, just some self massage, place your healing hands somewhere that you need it, maybe your neck, maybe your ch uh, chest or shoulders. Often it's the knees. If you just sit down and just rub your knees, you'll often go, oh, that feels phenomenal. Uh, right? Uh, Otto, thank you so much. It was great. And hey, I like that haircut. There it is for you. <laughs> yeah. I did great. it myself, believe it or not. I just shaved it and I'm letting it sprout. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, it looks coming. great. What great comes. job. All anyway, right. I enjoyed it. I'll see you. I got to run. Take care. Take care. Bye -bye. Take care. Yeah, I'll tell you. I've got to run too. I've got to meet for someone for lunch. Great, man. No excuses needed. Bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. All right. Take care. Thank you. Otto. Thank you, Otto. You just. Uh,